Okay, first of all, my name is Helmut Tam. Yeah, I call myself a solution architect, uh, 15 years sub-consultant, 25 years IT experience, passionated Java, JavaScript, Node.js developer, Node.js for the last year. And what I will talk about today and I will show you today is a structured vector graphic custom UI5 control. I will develop a custom UI5 control. And uh, additionally, I will talk about a Node.js OData server that I've written and or that I'm still writing and published to GitHub. It's open source. And I will show you in a moment. And let's start now. Uh, what we will see here is a demonstration of the node-based OData server. I will show you an application that is uh, publishing its uh, API via uh, OData. And then we will uh, see a demonstration of an SVG structured vect vector graphics based custom UI control. So there are two topics in here. And I will do this in live systems. Uh, what we will see at the end is the following. We have an application, a UI5 application, uh, with a start page. Uh, in the start page, we can uh, enter, uh, enter a number of attendees to this conference uh, for, uh, for different countries. And uh, when we go to the detail page here, we see a map of Europe and uh, the, the uh, the countries are colorized according to the number of attendees we entered at the start screen. And first, we will go into uh, the OData server uh, development. I will do that in Cloud9. Cloud9 is a web development environment that's very good suited for um, Node.js development, you also can uh, develop PHP and Java and I don't know what uh, languages they support. We will do Node.js development there. And my OData server, I called it no data server, uh, <laughs> Node, Node.js OData server. Uh, <laughs> yeah. um, it's published under MIT uh, uh, license, so it's free. Everyone can use it. Everyone is invited to collaborate uh, on this project with me, because I'm still at the beginning. I'm, I'm, I haven't um, uh, fulfilled the full, the full specification, OData specification yet. And uh, what's the architecture behind the uh, the no data server is uh I'm uh, running on top of the loopback frame framework. The loopback framework is a framework developed by Strongloop, which is an IBM company. And the loopback framework has uh, several uh, two main advantages uh, why I chose this. Uh, the w one advantage is uh, that it abstracts uh, the DB connections, database connections. So you can uh, connect to several databases uh, at the backend side uh, just by doing configuration. And uh, supported are Cloud and Oracle, MongoDB, MySQL, and very important for me, also memory of Firebase databases for test or, or development purposes. Um, that's, uh, there are also other, other databases that are supported. Uh, the second advantage of the loopback framework is uh, that it, uh, per default, it uh, uh, exposes a RESTful API. No, no, uh, no OData API, but a RESTful API. So you can work with, with your data using RESTful APIs, JSON, uh, JSON model in UI5 uh, language. And uh, my no data server plug-in is, uh, is an NPM package, a node package, uh, which I developed and uh, which I plug in into, or which everyone can plug in into uh, any Node.js application. And uh, I'm providing an OData API. And I'm doing this for the same models that are defined in, inside the application and that are used by the loopback uh, framework uh, that, uh, which provides the, the RESTful API. Okay. 
And here are some, some uh, other advantages. I think the most important advantage for me is uh, that uh, flat files are supported. Uh, I need it for uh, develop, uh, development purposes. When I'm sitting at home, I want to talk to an OData server, and I don't have access to, to a SAP gateway system. I'm using this or for testing services, for building uh, showcase applications for my customers. Uh, I can use it, um, and yeah, there are several other advantages. I go into, uh, don't go into the details now. Uh, I want to show you what I did. When we finished with our OData server development, uh, we uh, switch over to the ZAP, ZAP Web IDE and develop a UI5 application on top of this. Okay, and then we come to Q&A. But let me first move to the OData server development. As I said before, uh, we're doing this in Cloud9. This is a web development. It's running in the browser, uh, like uh, Zap Web IDE. And uh, here, uh, this is my application. Uh, I called it uh, No Data Server Example. Um, into this application, uh, or uh, when you set up such an application, such a loopback uh, loop application, uh, that uh, is really simple to do. It's, it's done in 10 to 20 minutes. Uh, you don't need more time. Uh, you get a folder structure. You get the project structure for this application. And uh, if you want to expose uh, data to the uh, via via the RESTful or the OData uh, API, you simply have to define so-called models uh, that are your that is your model data and uh, your your database tables to talk in relational database language. Um, for this uh, session, I created a model called attend, uh, which has three properties. That's a code, a language code, um, a name, that's a language name, and the quantity, the number of attendees uh, for, this, uh, for this country. Yeah, that's basically all. I just want to mention two other or two or three other files here. Uh, here are data sources are defined in the loopback application. I am working here with a memory or a file-based data, uh, data source. So the, the f uh, data is stored in, uh, I have to look here, um, the data is uh, stored in the storage folder in the file uh, data.json. And here is uh, uh, the data for the attendee table. I pre-filled it. Um, so uh, we can work with the data, already work with the data when we run our application. Um, yeah, and that's mainly it. I uh, imported or, or installed my no data server plugin into this application. And then I have to uh, configure the loopback application so that the loopback application uses my no data server, my plug-in. Uh, and I tell, I tell the loopback application that it uh, should call my plug-in each time uh, a request to slash odata slash anything comes, into, uh, comes in. So then my plug-in uh, is invoked and I can generate the, the odata uh, response. Okay, yeah, and that's basically all you have to do in your application. Uh, and what I do now, I, oh, I already started it. Um, I, I run the application that uh, I can I can stop it again and run it again. So you can see. Uh, it will take uh, really a few seconds to start the application. Uh, sorry, it was stopped and now it started. Sorry, I didn't. Um, you, you see, it, it really took a few seconds to start the application and it is running now. And the nice thing about um, Cloud9 is 
uh, about Cloud9 is that it's, it exposes uh, the applications to the internet. So I now have a host name for this application and uh, here I define the, the prefix OData, which I uh, defined in the configuration file, and I say I, I'm interested in the attendees uh, data, and when I run this, uh, uh, this uh, request, I get the data back, and it's uh, my, of course, my no data server is invoked, I, uh, it returns an OData request. Okay, then let's go to the Web IDE and do the development of the UI5 control. Um, I prepared a project for this and this is uh, SVG sample UI5 code uh, UI5con underscore two, and before I run this uh, application, this is basically I've, I've uh, used a template uh, to, to generate the code and did some adjustments. Uh, really, uh, not not much. Uh, I just uh, changed the start page, and and uh, that didn't take long. But I prepared it already for this session. Uh, what I want to mention here is uh, one change uh, that I made or that I have to make uh, for my no data server and this that's uh, uh, at the model. Um, the default model that is defined here in the manifest JSON um, has to use uh, or is not allowed to use batch mode because my no data server at the moment as I mentioned, it's under development, it's, it's in development and I haven't implemented batch mode yet. Uh, so you have to disable batch mode uh, for, the, for the request or for the models. And of course I'm here in the manifest, I just uh, mentioned these resources. Uh, there are two JavaScript files I added uh, to, the, to the project. I added them to the, to the JS folder here and the JavaScript files I uh, use are D3.js, uh, that's a library, D3.js is a library for manipulating and for working with uh, graphics, especially SVG graphics in JavaScript. JavaScript and it's really very uh, powerful, it's a very powerful library uh, to create and manipulate uh, graphic data in JavaScript and uh, the other one, the other JavaScript is just, uh, uh, is just delivering uh, uh, some color themes we use uh, to, to colorize the countries in, in the application. Okay, now I will run this application so that you can see what it's what we have so far. Run with server. And yeah, here is my data. The data is coming from my OData server sample application. And uh, we here have uh, the countries and here have the number of attendees. And uh, for example, I can change here the value for Norway, uh, save it to the database, uh, call a refresh, and you will see that the value for Norway is changed. If I had used a mock server, uh, I, the data wouldn't have changed because uh, the mock server is not allowed to write uh, to write to the local um, file system. Uh, and that's also one reason uh, I wrote the no data server because uh, mock server is fine for, for some things, but uh, there are times you need a real O data server in the back end. And okay, uh, when we forward to the detail page, we see nothing because uh, we haven't implemented our control yet. And that's what we are doing now. Okay, just go back. And to implement this, I firstly add uh, a new folder. <coughs> to my web apps folder, I call it SVG. And into this folder, I have to copy it from another project, 
Europe map. I copy um, an SVG file and I show you in a moment where I did this, uh, did get this uh, SVG file. Copy, paste. Firstly, I open the file and uh, as you can see here, at the top, it's a standard SVG file. SVG is an XML dialect, and um, it's um, in the meantime, uh, or in the past, it was uh, badly supported by browsers. Uh, but in the meantime, modern browsers uh, can render SVG, and, and all uh, current browsers can can uh, really render SVG. And so, uh, it's like HTML. You can use it like H HTML. And where did I uh, so or did I write this uh, this SVG file? And I say no, I didn't write it. Uh, I just went to Wikimedia, uh, searched for a map uh, of Europe, and found this map here. And I can download it here, with, uh, which I did and pasted it into my into my project and the nice thing about this um, uh, graphic is uh, that it exposes an id for each country on the uh, on the map so for germany it's de for russia it's ru for great britain it's gb it uh, we just get the language code for it and uh, you might remember in my database table or in my uh, model i defined the the code uh, property that is referring to this code here and the source code is it's written that it's originally from from inkscape so it offers you any chance to create something in Inkscape program, draw it, yeah. and then place it in there. So yeah. That's another way of uh yeah, I, I'm at, the, at the end, I will tell you that uh, I used this, uh, this uh, type of uh, this technique in a real life project at a cu at customer site, and I'll show you what we did there. Um, okay, how many minutes do I have? Um, so let's uh, go back to the, uh, to the uh, web IDE and create the control. So we have, um, I just want to show you the ID. The ID is here for CA, I think it's Canada. It's not Europe, but it's on the map. Uh, IS is Iceland and so on. And um, I will now create uh, another new folder, I call it controls, controls, and in this folder controls, I will create a new control file, which I call euromap.js, and now I do some copy-paste, because I don't have the time to do the coding, and you don't want to see me code here. Um, I copy the source code of the control, it's just 130 lines of uh, code for the, um, for the UI5 control. And um, I just uh, describe what I did here. I uh, extended the control, uh, uh, control, a virtual layout uh, control. I extended um, my name, uh, my control is named Euromap and it's defined in this namespace. Um, and then I have uh, defined some uh, metadata for this control, and the metadata is um, are three properties: title, subtitle, and the most important one is data path. The data path uh, refers to the to the OData entity set in our OData service. Then we come to the renderer function, and those of you who who listened to um, to Andreas Kunz uh, this morning. Uh, already know that uh, rendering of the UI5 control is done in the renderer function. And here we do some HTML, simple HTML rendering. And the most important two lines are these. Uh, here I'm loading the SVG file into memory and I write it in the next line, I write it to the output so that it get pushed uh, to, the, to the browser and the browser will render it. 
Um, yeah, and when we fin when we are finished with the, the rendering, uh, with the simple rendering, uh, we just uh, send another read to our OData model, model read, and we use uh, we use this data path uh, to to get the the entity set, the data path we defined here. We use a getter for this, and um, yeah, when the when the request, the read request succeeded, we get the data back here in the in the uh, callback function, and I assign it to a local cust uh, a local control variable of my control, and uh, then after that. I call the private underscore render SVG method, and this is here. And here is uh, here is uh, the real work of my control done in this uh, 20 lines coding. Um, and what I do is um, the most important thing. Uh, here I loop over the result set I got from the uh, from the old data service, uh, and uh, for each country I get back, I select with the code I select. The, uh, the tag in the DOM, uh, so the DOM node, I select the DOM node by ID. Uh, I also could have uh, used jQuery here. I just used uh, D3 because uh, uh, D3, as I mentioned, is better suited for uh, manipulating SVG files, but I uh, also could have done it with jQuery. And then I use uh, D3 or this tag uh, to set some properties uh, on this uh, node, uh, on this DOM node. And uh, here I set, uh, set the color uh, according to the quantity we enter it, entered into our uh, OData server. And here uh, I additionally add uh, a tooltip uh, to this, um, to the country, to each country, which says a country quantity, for example, two fellows from uh, Norway are here. That we will, uh, we will see that in our, in our um, application, in our uh, detail view then. Okay, and for uh, countries with a quantity of zero, uh, I just set the, set the opacity to 20% so that they get a little bit, uh, that the color is lighter. And yeah, that's all we have to do to uh, program or to develop our uh, control, our UI5 control, but we have forgotten one thing, or I haven't forgotten, otherwise I, I wouldn't mention it. Um, we have to use it. And where do we use it? We use it in our detail page. Uh, the detail page is quite simple. It's a semantic full screen page and I already inserted the coding for this, for the control. I just uncomment the lines. And here I use my Euromap control. Uh, assign some properties uh, to, to uh, the control for uh, title, subtitle, and the data path. And the data path is the path to our entity set in the OData service. And so that the application knows this control, I have to add the namespace to the header of this XML file. Yeah, and that's it. Now we will go to the to the application. We will refresh the application. We will see we still have uh, one participant. Ah, sorry, one participant from Norway. I set it to five. Save the data. Forward to the detail page, and here you see the Euro the map of Europe. And the countries are colorized by the number of attendees. And when I uh, hover over, the, over Norway, you see five fellows from Norway are here. <coughs> so yeah, that's, uh, that's my application. That's, uh, that's what I wanted to show you. Uh, yeah, and uh, now I go back to, the, to my slides, to my presentation. 
Q and A. Are there any questions? Yeah. Um, yeah, good, good question. I wanted to show you that they are responsive. Uh, yeah, very good. Uh, I go back into the application and I switch to um, a smartphone display and when I now forward to the to the application, you see that it is responsive, that it is uh, rendered for smartphone devices now. Okay. Yeah. Can you zoom in? Uh, not yet, no. No, but that's... How do you define responsiveness, right? Responsiveness is either mean that it's... Yeah. I mean, no, no, I mean, that's yeah. perfectly fine. But, uh, I mean, there are also other approaches to, like, to responsiveness. I mean, for example, yeah. It doesn't necessarily come out of the box with SVG. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's uh, not coming totally out of the box, but it's very easy to implement. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, okay, let's go back to my presentation once again. Or are there any more questions? Any other questions? Then. I say, okay, we are at the end. The resources are here, all the resources. You can download all the code I've showed you, the UI5 application, the OData server example, um, the OData server itself from the NPM package, from, uh, from yeah, and uh, also from GitHub, and there is a link to the Cloud9 uh, development environment. Okay, and then I say thank you some details about me, contact data, and that's it. Thank you.